Hello, in this lecture we are going to discuss the port configuration of PIC microcontrollers. In this tutorial we will be using a PIC 16F877 as reference. So we will present how to define input and outputs. Some important registers are needed for this purpose. Examples of these registers that we are going to use are the status register, the tris register, and the port register. At the end of this tutorial, you will be familiar with the associated registers for configuring and accessing the inputs and outputs of the PIC. At first, Let's remember the general architecture of the PIC, of the PIC 16F877. It's composed of a CPU, three types of memories, and some peripherals. Its RAM, the RAM memory, is composed of four banks. Bank 0, Bank 1, Bank 2, and Bank 3. We have to know that the RAM is what we are going always to use and the data stored in it are lost on power off. Each bank is divided into a series of registers. Each of the registers has its own address and memory location. These addresses are denoted by using hexadecimal numbers, as seen here. It should be noticed that only one bank is accessible at a time. The registers are classified into two categories. The special function registers, SFR, and the general purpose registers, GPR. We have also some unused places. The general purpose registers do not have any special function. These are used for general purpose. They are free locations that you can freely allocate. Here we note that the CPU can easily access the data in these registers. The special function registers are memory registers used for special purposes. They cannot be used as normal registers. They perform the function assigned to them. So their function is set at the time of manufacturing. The user cannot change the function of these registers of the SFR registers. Some useful SFRs for programming are the status register, the port register, and the trace register. In addition to other important registers with different functions. For the moment, we want to introduce these registers, the status register, the port register, and the trace register. The status register is used to change the bank, so to choose between bank 0, bank 1, bank 2, or bank 3. Port register is used to assign logic values, 0 or 1, to the ports. Trace register is a data direction register for input and output. These are mostly used and are needed to define and control inputs and outputs. The register port, it is used to read or write the data from or to the port pins. So we, using this register, we can read or write data from a pin. Writing ones to the port will make the corresponding port as high 
And similarly, writing zero to the port will make the corresponding port pins as low. So one means high, zero means low. Before reading and writing the data from the ports, their direction needs to be set. Unless the port is configured as output, the data from the registers will not go to controller pins. So this register is used to configure the port pins as inputs or outputs. Writing ones to the trace will make the corresponding port pins as input, and writing zeros to the trace will make the corresponding port pin as output. Remember that, for example, to use the port register, we need access to bank zero. While to use the trace register, we need access to bank one. This selection of memory bank is controlled through a register called status. The register status is present in each bank, so it can be used for bank selection. The status register is an 8-bit register. We have 8 bits here. It's like all other registers. It has 8 bits. This register contains arithmetic status, the C, DC, and Z bits. It contains also a reset status, the TD and TO bits, in addition to a memory bank select bits, which are the RP0, RP1, and IRP. IRP is the eighth bit whose role is for indirect addressing of internal RAM. So if IRP is set to one, we can select bank two and three. If IRP is zero, this allows to select bank zero and bank one. The bits RP0 and RP1 are used for direct addressing to select a memory bank. So 00 to select bank 0. So if RP1 is 0 and RP0 is 0, we select bank 0. To select bank 1, we need to set RP0 to 1 and RP1 to 0. To select bank 2, we need to set RP1 to 1 and RP0 to 0. And to select bank 3, we have to set both RP0 and RP1 to 1. Now let's take an example. This example is about configuring port. To configure a port, we need to write this program, a program composed of four lines, four instructions. At first, we set RP0 bit to have access to bank 1. So we write bit set F status RP0 in this manner, bit set F, BSF status RP0. This will set the RP0 bit. That means RP0 is equal to 1. And this gives access to bank 1 since RP1 is 0 by default. So RP1 is 0 by default. We set RP0 to 1. In this manner, we have access to bank 1. Now we can use the trace register. So we cannot use the trace register before selecting bank 1. So we use the trace register to configure port B as output. We have here two methods. In the first one, we can use move LW, move literal to W, B, eight zeros, followed by move WF or move W to F, trace B. This configures port B as output. In the second method, we can clear the trace directly. Clear the trace means trace is equal to zero and is equal to output. So by saying clear F trace B, in this manner, we configure port B as output. 
I mean we configure all the bits of port B as outputs. Finally, we return back to bank 0 by clearing RP0. We say bit clear F status RP0. In this manner, we clear RP0. So that means RP0 is 0. To configure four lines in port B as outputs and four lines as inputs, we have to just make small changes in the value of the literal. So here, instead of eight zeros, we write four ones and four zeros. And here, in this example, we configure RB0, RB1, RB4, and RB6 as outputs, while we configure RB2, RB3, RB5, and RB7 as inputs. This is our lecture for today. In future lectures, we will talk about other important registers. Thanks for listening.